Hi everyone, welcome to our very first live critique for 2020. We are so sorry it's taken so long to get started today. If you've been sitting there waiting, if you've submitted a photo, we had a couple of technical issues. Um, and it was interesting because we were like, it worked four weeks ago perfectly. And since the, um, the last critique, we've had a lot of software updates. We've updated all of our running systems to Catalina and all of that kind of stuff. And with doing that, we had to, to go in and change a few settings and make sure that um, we had approved the obviously the, the screen sharing and everything like that within the system. So gosh, it's so easy to, to forget little things like that and to and to kind of keep going. But yeah, I'm excited that you guys are joining me. Please leave a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. I've got 20 photographs I'm going to get through that have been submitted for our live image critique. I think yesterday when we opened submission, we hit a record. Yeah, um, it was, it was um, um, so there was a little bit of the delay in um, posting the link. And, and then when, when it actually did go up, 10 images went up in under a minute and then the remaining were the next following minute. So it was basically two minutes done. That is insane, <laughs> absolutely insane. Now, if you see me look off to the side from the camera, I'm reading some of the comments that you guys are sharing over here. I don't know who's leaving the comments. All it says where it should say your name is Facebook user. So um, I am reading your comments. Good morning. We've got Philippines. Good hi. We've got Quebec. We have Los Angeles, Wagga Wagga in New South Wales. We've got someone from New, Ze New Zealand, Wisconsin. This is amazing. Good morning, everyone. It is. It still blows my mind that um, you know we're we're doing this and we're sharing it with people all over the world. Um, and I suppose it's sort of, you know, really quite astounding for me <laughs> to do that. I, I, you probably think, why, why? But it is, I, I actually just think it's amazing that there are people from all over the world um, tuning in to watch this, which is absolutely um, fantastic. Like I said, I have 20 images. I've got them open here in Photoshop. I'm going to use my Wacom tablet to do a little drawing on people's images to, to help, I suppose, explain what it is that I'm looking at and where I think images um, could potentially be improved or slightly changed for next time. I think this is such a great way to learn. Uh, when you submit an image, or even if you have not submitted an image, you're gonna listen to a lot of different things that I'm gonna, gonna see and talk about to hopefully make you aware of them next time you're shooting. The, the whole purpose behind doing a live critique like this is purely because I can't be in the group all the time giving CC on everyone's posts. Um, we've we've had a really busy first week back in the studio, studio after our Christmas break. We just finished a two-day workshop with 12 amazing photographers right here in, in our studio. And it was a long two days. We covered a lot and I can tell you last night I really did enjoy that glass of wine when, when I eventually got home and tomorrow I am off to the UK so like I said it's been a really really busy week and we were a bit behind in getting that uh, link up for people to submit their images so I'm guessing people were waiting for it <laughs> excited uh, if this is your first critique um, I'm gonna do one every single month like I have been previously the Recording the live recording will stay in the group if you can't watch the entire critique. We also upload those onto my YouTube channel. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Kelly Brown, you can go there and watch all of the previous critiques as well. So we like to keep them up there because sometimes um, you know you don't always get to catch the full thing, or you may uh, forget something that I talked about previously. So yeah. What happens is I go through each image, like I said, I'm going to talk about composition, I'm going to talk about lighting, I'm going to talk about posing, styling, you name it. I'm going to critique the images uh, in a way that are going to draw your attention to things that you might not have seen yourself or you 
You may even look at a photograph and go, do you know what, why, I don't quite know why my image doesn't look the way I want it to look. So I'm gonna give you a few sort of tips and, and insights into to what I see and um, like I said, how you could potentially uh, change something next time you're in the studio. But yeah, it is a little nerve wracking submitting an image. Um, I promise you if it fits your first time getting a photo in here, I will be very, very gentle and um, I'll take good care of you, so don't worry. But let's get started with our very, very first image here. Mr. Garrett is behind the camera and he's going to, to read out any questions if you've got them and you wanna pop those into the comments as well. We'll take a little bit of a break if we need to and um, and yeah, we'll try to get through this as quickly as possible, but obviously not rush. <laughs> okay, so I the first thing I've kind of noticed here is just how beautiful the color palette is in this image. I'm really enjoying the way that it's been put together and styled. The the size of the flowers and the the backdrop here. Um, that those roses are really quite big in comparison to the baby the but at the same time they're not overpowering so I don't mind that I am looking at the baby but my eye at the same time is being drawn continuously to this part of the image because it is very bright so where the light is coming in from that left hand side it's hitting that flower first and then it's hitting the wrap here and they're really really bright compared to the skin tones on the baby so if you have a look at how dark the baby's face is compared to those brighter areas and you know you can do that let me just grab get rid of those and I'll bring up my my curves palette here so if you bring your little um, hand tool here over and you place it over different parts of the image you can see where that information lies within the histogram so you can see that's that's sort of that side of the face there is sort of a little darker than you know those those mid tones so you're heading into some darker shadow areas over here then we come to the brighter side of the face those skin tones are up where they should be but when we come over here and you can see some of that information is hitting the end of the histogram there it's overexposed now if I hold the option key in here on my keyboard and I grab the little white slider, you can see where the loss of detail is in those highlights. On the flower, um, on the, the bonnet, on the tie, and so forth. So we're losing and clipping some of those highlights there. You've got to be really careful, um, not only in camera when you're exposing, but also in post-production. Now I'm not exactly sure what type of lighting you've used here I'm not going to make an assumption but I can see that that light is very low I can see that the light is coming in and it's hitting the backdrop right there and it's also really dark over here where the backdrop sort of falls off to that right hand side where there is no light so what I'm going to suggest here is oh, excuse me that if the light was slightly lifted if it's an artificial light and a softbox, if you lift that light and then sort of tilt it up a little bit, you can then feather the light to come down in this direction as opposed to straight down here towards the side of the baby. And therefore you'll eliminate over lighting that side of the prop. What I'd also recommend is bringing in over here some form of reflector to bounce some light into those shadows and then you're going to have a little bit more detail in those darker areas because if you have a look at that histogram you've got information hitting the the the, the light side so you're going to lose detail in your highlights and then down here in your blacks you're losing information there as well so you need to to make sure that you've got detail in all of your photographs throughout you know the entire image so that when you go to print this it's going to print beautifully and you're going to see all of that gorgeous detail in all of those beautiful colors that you've got going on here um, across and throughout the entire image so um, in terms of that lighting just perhaps soften it off and if you are using natural light and you've got floor to ceiling windows block off the the bottom of that light so that if it is if that window does come right down to the floor block off a little bit probably about that much 
um, across the bottom of that window and you'll find that then the light will will drift across that and come more onto the baby as opposed to coming straight in lighting those that side there alrighty posing is beautiful the baby looks really comfortable um, I like the way if we think about our um, hang on let me bring up Our rule of thirds, I like the way the baby's head is positioned in the top left hand corner and the body is sort of coming down on that curve and leading you into that negative space so I'm really enjoying that. The other thing that I'm, I'm going to suggest is because you've got all these beautiful soft pastel tones and it is a little moody, like you don't want to get rid of that moody boot moodiness by bringing in a reflector but you just want to add a little bit more light into those shadows so you still want to keep that beautiful depth. Um, I would have possibly used a darker wrap in here and what you would have found if you'd picked a wrap that was a little bit darker than um, the, the little outfit I suppose I was going to say the knitted romper which anyway the outfit if you'd picked a darker tone that baby would have really stood out but because you've used a cream or a I think it's cream by the looks of it um, in this photo it's brighter than the baby's skin tones it's brighter than the baby's outfit so it is taking um, your eye your attention away from that baby so if you'd used a darker tone that baby would be you know the brightest part of the image if you directed that light across the top and um, and it would really stand out and wouldn't be competing for attention in terms of the backdrop I do really enjoy this particular backdrop but I feel that the baby is getting lost in there because of the way that it's been lit and because of that that cream wrap that's been used underneath the baby so consider making a couple of changes like that and you will start to really draw your attention towards um, towards this gorgeous bub as well alrighty um, also when you're using a prop like this uh, I can see that you've you've cropped through the bottom half I'm oh, not sorry bottom not half but the bottom area of leaves down here but you've left them in everywhere else in the frame so try to to get the entire prop in or if you were going to you could potentially crop in a little tighter throughout the entire image so that it was a bit more balanced and you weren't just cropping through one side of that prop um, so consider that you either want the entire prop in or crop it so you're kind of getting rid of um, you know small elements on on all sides or a couple of the sides not just the bottom part there but yeah anyway um, the exposure looks you know lovely on the baby's um, face so when we looked before at the skin tones you know they were kind of sitting in that histogram where they should be and the the treatment of the skin tones is really lovely as well just be careful of those um, sort of cooler pinker tones there in the hands and feet and we've also got a little bit of a, um, a hot spot here on the back of that baby's hand and on the nose as well so you can tone those down um, in post-production or you can control that a little more in, in, in Photoshop I mean sorry in camera and then just be careful of over sharpening so the baby's bonnet and the little outfit there look really quite sharp in comparison to that beautiful soft skin alrighty we've got quite a few people watching this morning oh good morning oh we have someone from Portugal yes. hi we've got someone from India good morning um, we're currently at 84 Oh, fantastic. So Hi, it's everyone. A, it's a big morning. Maybe this is a good time to do it. Absolutely. I know it's not the best time for all of our UK and Europe um, group members, but like I said, this is going to stay here, so it's going to be in the, uh, in the group. All right. So... <laughs> The eye connection here with this baby is, you just want to know what the baby's thinking when it's looking directly at that camera. The, the exposure looks great in terms of the skin tone, the, you know, the focus is really nice and sharp here. I can see that there, there's been a texture applied to the background here. Textures are such an amazing um, way of, you know, creating a little bit more detail, adding a, a bit of a different look to a photograph, and also they can help you with um, tidying up backgrounds, especially blankets and things like that, when you can't always get rid of all of the, the wrinkles and lines. 
so I can see that that's been added here I'm not quite sure if this is the right texture for this particular image but um, I do like that the fact that you've you know tried to apply a texture here to give the give the photograph a bit of a different look the brightness in the yellow top here um, looks to me a little oversaturated so controlling that saturation there in post-production uh, is going to be really beneficial to the final print here because what's going to happen when you push a color outside of its gamut you are going to have a really hard time printing that because the the color space I suppose it's a whole new lesson the, the, and, a, and a very large topic understanding you know when we shoot um, when we shoot in camera then how we post process and then how we print how that final image sort of comes out in terms of the way that we've handled it with and keeping it all within that color space is really important um, and understanding that but it looks to me like it is a little oversaturated and it's been pushed a bit too far having a look over here at the histogram you can see that some of those highlights have hit the um, the end there and if we bring up our our curves palette here and when we move that slider you can see that it there isn't a lot of information in the highlights on that top and the headband there and it is is oversaturated so it is clipping which means you're going to have a really hard time getting that to print properly and have any detail in those areas at all so when you're using really bright dominant colors like that you've got to be so careful with keeping them um, you know having a calibrated monitor as well is going to really help you in terms of knowing where that that color is sitting and if there is going to be detail left in there the other thing when you are working with really bright colors like that they are going to dominate the image they're going to take your you know your eye continually away from the subject I know sometimes when clients turn up at the studio we can't always guarantee that we're gonna have them dressed in outfits um, that are appropriate for you know photography and, and beautiful taking beautiful photos so it is that communication with them prior to the session and I always say to my clients wear neutral colored clothes because they photograph best so and if a client comes back and asks more question I sort of say you know tend towards the more subtle tones um, and then that way the face and the baby are what are really going to stand out here the the blue little skirt as well um, it's quite bright so it does bring your eye away from here like when you open the photo up you look at the baby's face but then your eye is continually drawn to those other brighter areas of the image this is um, I can see that the baby is a little bit older than a newborn and it is it's not you know obviously yet sitting and so it is a difficult age to photograph in terms of propping and posing and positioning because they're not quite strong enough to do that themselves uh, so I think you've done a great job of getting that connection the baby's face is closest to the camera and you've got the little legs going around there I probably with this particular shot would have come in cropped it you know come in and got a really nice tight crop of that baby's face and then pulled back a little further and allowed more room around the baby so that it wasn't such a tight crop because we're over here on this side we're we're really quite close to the edge of the frame and then over here as well so when you do that full pullback make sure that you give the the subject enough room around them to breathe and then come in and get that beautiful tight crop in camera and focus on that beautiful face because that's what it's all about because the, you know we've got a hand over here that's kind of gone off into the background and then we've got one that's sort of just sitting up in front of the face and that's where they naturally sit at this age and then the feet aren't really do, doing anything either so not really necessary in in this type of um, you know setup but what I'm also going to recommend here in terms of the the editing you've applied the the texture really well um, softening it just a little bit is going to really benefit um, this photograph as you can see over here with the arm behind the the baby in the in the background and the distance and the feet they're really soft but if you come up and have a look at the texture there's lots of detail there in that texture so 
um, when you're applying it, you've got to think about that that depth of field, that focal plane. So you've got, obviously, the baby is in focus here, so the texture should be in focus here. So then you start to think about how that focus falls off as it disappears into the background and softening it so it matches that. That'll really help as well. And don't forget, when anyone is playing with textures, you can have so much fun with them. You can change the color. You can, um, you know, I can see that more vignetting has been added here. You can have, like, they're so versatile. You can use all of the different layer modes to get different effects as well. But with a with a light image like this in terms of the outfit, in terms of the lighting, I would have used a lighter texture and background as opposed to a darker one, if that makes sense, because there's such a contrast between the background and, and the outfit and the baby um, that it seems a little detached. So trying to, to bring your focus and attention into that baby, you know, next time possibly use something a little lighter and a little less heavy and try and fo uh, follow that, um, that, f that focus and depth of field. And that vignetting, as mentioned before, it's really quite heavy on the outside there of the photograph so try less is sometimes you know best when you apply a vignette if you if that's your you know your style if that's what you you want to do bring bring back the opacity of that um, to to suit the the overall image but yeah I think you've you've done a great job of getting the the connection with that subject it is a difficult age to photograph when they you know they're more alert, they're more alert they're not, but they're not really doing too much so I think it's a it's a lovely photograph of her face that the parents are gonna love now by the sounds of it word got out that you're going to be in Vegas this year <laughs> <laughs> yeah. some people would like to know some stuff about what you're doing oh we got a few people talking about Vegas do you know what I love Vegas <clears throat> not many people do and it's actually not often that I get out of the hotel that I'm staying in in Vegas when I'm there to, to see, see much that's going on. But every year for the past, actually this will be my eighth year, uh, I go back to WPPI in February. And it is my favorite photography event of the year. Oh, well, actually I'm about to go to SWPP and I would say that they're probably on par with each other. This is um, gonna be my third time at SWPP. And I love both events um, purely because, and if you've never been, it's very hard to, to make someone understand the atmosphere at these events. You go to a conference, and when I first went, I didn't know a single, well, I did know one person, but she was busy off doing stuff. So, I, you know, you go, you don't know anyone, you push yourself outside your com comfort zone, you're forced to be in, in classrooms with people you've never met, you meet people from all over the world, you learn from the world's best educators, you come together with like-minded people and you share in such an extraordinary experience that it is life-changing and I went like I said all those years ago and I was so scared so nervous and it was phenomenal and I that's why I go back every single year because that's my time every year to re-energize and and become more inspired within myself as a photographer in the industry because you know I'm connecting I'm sharing I'm communicating I'm learning I am watching so much go on around me in terms of the print competitions and the judging and like I said it's so hard to explain it is like incredible but anyway what's happening at WPPI is a one-day baby summit on the 23rd of February. It's 199 US dollars for a full day of learning from Sandra Hill, Lola Milani, Kristen Mackey and Maggie Robinson. Four incredibly talented photographers who are going to be sharing newborn posing, maternity posing, lighting, editing and sales and business and it's jam-packed one day full of content I'm going to be there I'm also going to be chairing in the print competition um, over the 23rd and the 24th so you need to come and watch that it is free to attend that I'm also teaching a newborn posing masterclass on the 26th at 5 30 p.m. trying to remember all the dates <laughs> 
And then the day before that, I'm teaching a creative child portrait masterclass. They're limited numbers, those classes. Um, so they're my two personal classes that I'm teaching on my own. And then um, the, the baby summit will be happening on the 23rd. The trade show is ridiculous. You've got some of the biggest names in the industry presenting on the trade show floor, and that's free to attend. So if you want to see the latest gear, equipment, anything like that, I'm giving it the biggest plug. What's SWPP? <laughs> SWPP is the Society of Wedding and Portrait Photographers. That's in London, in ha there. Novotel at Hammersmith. God, my memory's doing well today. Um, I am judging, I'm chairing um, a judging room there on the 22nd and the 23rd. And I can't give you details about my masterclass there because it's already sold out. So I'll be teaching a class and I'll be in and out of the trade show doing lots of stuff there as well. But it, it's, um, you can register on, if you just Google SWPP and then up the top in the menu, click on convention, you can register to come along to the trade show there as well and get your hands on some amazing products. So I guarantee if you go to an event like that, you will not be disappointed because there's always so much to learn, so much to see to touch to feel and the people that you'll meet like some of the people that i've met have become my bestest friends in the whole world so every year when i go back we all come together to celebrate each other's successes to regroup to inspire each other and to motivate each other you know for the next year and what we're going to do so it pushes you outside your comfort zone but it pushes you on such another level to just keep going you get what you need you basically get the fuel to keep going and that's what i love about it so much so if you can get to either of those events please come WPPI, like I said, I've been going for a long time and I will continue to go for a long time. I'm there, you, you'll be sick of me by the end of it if you are coming. <laughs> um, someone's asked, is that correct? Someday I will go there. Well, actually for all the people who are saying, I'm gonna go next year, Unfortunately, this is the only year that the Baby Summit's actually going to be at WPPI. It's a one-off event. Um, it won't be happening there again. So if you can get to it, come. Otherwise, you're going to miss out because it is the it is the last time it'll ever run. We used to run the Baby Summit here, which was a three-day event in Australia. We did run it once in Atlanta, um, and then we decided that that was it. So whilst it is the Baby Summit, WPPI are running it. I'm just there as the host and giving it one last hurrah. So come join us, celebrate. It is an amazing adventure, that's for sure. But let's get back to this. <laughs> I almost like, oh, I could take a breath after that. I won't bring it up again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, someone has asked though about 2020 workshops for Melbourne, question mark? Uh, yes, I do have, if you go to my website, newbornposing.com, I've got workshops in Perth and Melbourne that have still got some places left, but everything else is, is sold, uh, out. sold out, so yes, you can still register for that. Alrighty, let's have a look at this beautiful maternity image. I love high key, um, and uh, I think that this beautifully, you know, beautifully constructed image here has been done very very well I am looking though at that histogram and I can see that we are losing a lot of detail obviously when you backlight like this you do want to to get rid of that background you don't need detail in it so when you print this nothing in that background is going to print if there's no information there so let's go ahead and have a look here at our a little bit of a closer look at our histogram so you can see so there is just a teeny tiny little bit of information there just off to the left hand side of the lady's hair. But we can also see that we are losing a little bit of detail there in the dress around the top of the belly and on the thigh there and coming down towards the ground. So you do have to be extremely careful with that exposure. And I do understand that it can be a little tricky to get it absolutely spot on and to keep all of those details. So. If we have a little look in here, um, when you come in and you are losing detail here in that belly, that's the most important part of the photograph. And so when you are getting that exposure right in camera, you might just need to not so much worry about overexposing that background too much because you can do that in post-production later on, but focus on keeping all of the detail there in 
um, the areas that are really important to the photograph because it's a maternity photograph so that bump is what it's essentially all about <clears throat> excuse me I'm enjoying um, you know the the side profile here you just have to be careful when you get a mum to put her chin down and you are going side profile and at the risk of showing you my <laughs> double chin you know when I'm side sad down like that you are going to see some of that lovely excess skin and um, extra excess weight that I'm carrying under my chin which if I looked at the photo I'd be like oh my god look at my double chin whereas if you are posing a woman and I can the, with the hair coming in down the side they're blocking that light I wouldn't worry about turning the face away from the light towards the camera and then have her look down now you're going to see less of my double chin under here so because we're not using the light on her face at all because it's it's coming down and it's blocking the light there is light on her face coming from another direction but when you're backlighting like that when the hair comes down you're not using that light to light her face so turn the face away from the light and bring it down to look down and I always say look down towards your breast so you're not looking off into the distance or anything like that but it's a very comfortable position and then you're going to lose that double chin so um, in terms of you know making um, sort of flattering choices I suppose like that for, for women when you're posing them um, it's going to make them a lot happier that's for sure so I can also see when I zoom in here where the background has been overexposed because the hair is darker in here into that background so you've got to be really consistent with that post processing um, and and making sure that you do get get it in all of the areas where it should be because if we come up into our <clears throat> histogram and you can see over here on my um, on my on my histogram the little indicator move where the information is so obviously that's where it's very overexposed there's no detail and as I move over the image you'll see where it sits within the histogram so in here where it should be overexposed like here um, it's actually darker because it's been missed in post so um, don't forget to zoom in and have a look at all of those areas as well and when you are pushing backgrounds in post-production make sure that you do keep an eye on the information in those important areas like on the belly so having a look here I can see where and if I'm, I'm having a look at the highlights I can see where you know light is coming in from this direction um, and lighting that belly and lighting her face but what I can also see is some light coming in an upward direction and highlighting the the nose and um, under the chin and places like that so keep an eye on the direction of that light when you are posing a um, a woman in front of a window that's floor to ceiling um, that is standing block off bottom the bottom of the window so the lights coming in from above and it's not going to hit the floor um, and if you're using artificial light with a large modifier try um, you know turning that light source gently away and softening it um, and raising and elevating that light so it's not coming down and hitting certain areas because we've got a lot of lights that are coming up and bouncing up and underneath the belly here um, and highlighting some areas that don't don't need to be lit so your light need, if you're gonna in post push a background like this you need to be really consistent with the direction of that light and where it's coming from so a couple of things to to think about but you know what overall when you open it it's a lovely image it's just you could make this an incredible image with adjusting that light source and um, a slightly adjusting that pose for this beautiful mama <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just that little hand on the teddy bear carrots just said how cute it is. I'm just going to have a very quick sip of water. So colour palette here, I, I'm enjoying the consistency in the styling. It's You've done a really great job of putting, you know, the, an, the neutral tone teddy bear with the little outfit that matches the background 
Um, so therefore the baby really does stand out. So this is a great example of when you do take the time to think about the color tones that you use and how you bring them together. And you know what, it's not overly styled in that sense. And you've got that little teddy bear and the way that the hands just come across there and the way that the little toes are curled around the, the, the bottom of the teddy bear, it's created such a, you know, a unique image um, that the family are really going to love. There's a few things here that you could do to improve it, um, but I think you've done a really good job. So let's have a little look in here. The arm where it's coming up underneath the face like that has created a really large um, surface area of skin that you know is kind of competing there for attention with the face so what you want to do when you're posing a baby like this on their side is that elbows up quite high you've got to get that elbow down in line with the body and to bring that hand up underneath the face and then you'll see those those gorgeous curly little fingers so bring that that shoulder and that elbow down by the side of the body as you're turning them onto their side you can just you know gently pull that elbow down and you're going to then just have that beautiful face plus when you bring that elbow down you can bring the chin up to sit on the hand so therefore the face won't be pointing down so much because what happens is when you shoot from above like this um, where the hat's kind of coming down across the top of the head there you can still see where the head is now that's a really large hang on let me do that again draw a bit neater that's a really large area of head compared to the size of the baby's face so you want to bring that chin up so the face is more square on to the lens as opposed to the top of the head because it's going to accentuate the top of the head as well and and make it appear a little bit bigger um, the other thing with the, the little feet down here, whilst I love how these little toes are curled over that teddy bear's feet, it's just adorable. You can see how they're curled over there. This foot here just looks a little awkward and it almost looks uncomfortable. So what I suggest there is the bottom leg where it's kind of, I'm imagining that it's coming down like that underneath the top leg. You need to turn the baby's hips over towards the posing bag a little bit more and pull that knee up higher so the foot sits, whoops, so the foot sits more up behind the back of that knee. That's going to make it look a lot neater and um, and make that baby look a little bit more comfortable. So yeah, refining that pose will make the baby look a little bit more comfortable. Bringing that chin up and sitting it into the hand will also help close that baby's mouth so the tongue is not sticking out like that. So it doesn't look a little, um, like it is cute though, don't get me wrong, but um, my personal preference is to try and get that baby's mouth closed as much as I possibly can. But I think you're, you know, you've done a great job with your exposure. The light is lovely and soft coming across the face, except for we've got a bright highlight coming here onto the shoulder, which is brighter than the face. So controlling the direction of that light a little more in terms of how it falls across the face um, will, will really benefit you there. Um, I think that's it. You know, portrait crop for this is also really lovely. It's different. It suits it. I think you've done a, a really good job there. If you'd brought that chin up so that the face was kind of coming in this direction, you could have photographed, so your lens could have been over here taking that photograph, taking this picture. But then you would have lost the, you know, the connection between the little boy and his teddy bear. So I th I'm, I'm actually enjoying that that portrait aerial crop like that but you could curl him up just that little bit more by rotating those hips and tucking that foot in and pulling that elbow down and you'll be great when you're using hats that are a bit too small <laughs> for babies and their little ears are sticking out um, just try as much as you can to give it a really good stretch to pull it down um, so that it does kind of come across the top of the ears and a little bit further down around that that face but it does look like it's a, just a bit small but yeah, I love that color palette and that teddy. All right. Um, I 
first impression of this is I really love the expression on her face. Like it actually looks like a beautiful natural expression. She doesn't look like she's been forced to, to do anything. She looks comfortable. I love the way she's looking off into the distance. Um, the only other, the only thing for me in terms of this particular pose is the hand on the dress down here gets really lost. So I like the way she looks quite relaxed here with the hand across the, the belly, but we've lost this arm here in the background and that hand. And if you're going to have someone holding on to a dress, you make a feature out of it. You have a dress that is that little bit more sort of flowy and you have the movement in the dress. You let the wind catch the dress and you use that more to your advantage. But here you've kind of got her looking like she's just pulling it to the side, like she's going to step, you know, make a step or something like that, step up on something. Um, but it's not really adding to, to this as an image. I would probably would have had her with the other hand just resting maybe on top of the other, other hand. Um, but yeah, it is a bit more of a moving action kind of, like for me, I can see that like she looks like she's about to, to start going somewhere. So possibly a less tighter crop to give me a bit more of an idea as to the movement and where she might be going. Uh, when you photograph in, in garden areas like this, you do have to be careful that there's not too much going on behind your subject that's going to compete for attention. I can see that you've gone to a lot of trouble communicating with um, your, you know, the lady in the photograph in terms of outfit and, and um, head headdress, I suppose, like the, the little crown, flower so crown. <laughs> Um, you know, that, that sort of attention to detail um, in terms of preparing for the shoot is great, but the location doesn't match that. So you've got white sort of flowers going on over here and then you've got pinks and purples going on behind and then you've got some palm trees also in the background. So that scene doesn't sit well with the way that she is dressed and styled. So perhaps doing a little bit more location scouting before the shoot to help you find the perfect location and try to find something that's not going to deter or distract from the portrait that you are taking. So down here in the bottom, in terms of what I'm saying, you've got the roots of the trees that are the stem, I suppose. Gosh, I'm having a hard time finding the right words today. Um, <laughs> They're very dark, they're very heavy. And then when you come up here in the background, you've also got some really dark, um, heavy shadows as well. So whilst I always say that the brightest part of the image grabs your eye, sometimes dark areas like this are just as vital in terms of how you draw your attention into your main subject. So try to eliminate all of the distracting elements behind your subject in terms of um, location and you will draw your eye into that beautiful face um, you know like you like you should I like I said I love her expression when you are in post-production try not to to push the contrast um, so much so it just looks like it's a little a little too contrasty in terms of your highlights and shadows so you've got some quite sort of dark um, shadows going on around the hair and the the eyes and then you've got some really bright highlights as well on the, the top of the nose the flowers and the chest area as well so a little bit more control of light which means choosing not only a location that's going to suit the subject but also getting the right time of day so it really does pay when you are shooting outside often to go to the location at the time of the shoot to see what the light is going to be like so that you know what to prepare for because if you're going to shoot in full sun locations in the middle of the day you may need to to provide some type of um, shade for your shoot you can use scrims you can use trees you can use lots of things um, and when you are in locations like this look for beautiful um, shapes and trees that can help frame your subject as well that's another really good tip so Oh, and one other thing, like pathways and stuff like that, um, try to crop those out. They're, they're probably not really um, necessary either. 
but yeah, like I said, um, you've done a great job, ex you know, capturing a beautiful expression there. Alrighty. I can see one of my textures. I um, I don't often photograph maternity models front on. It's actually quite um, quite a hard thing to do to make them look flattering. So when you are photographing somebody um, front on like this that is pregnant, just be careful um, that you don't make them look masculine. So you need to create a little bit of shape when you are photographing someone front on because when when someone's pregnant not all pregnant women go straight out sometimes they go out this way as well so they lose their waist so what I try to do um, is bring up one of the knees and then bring it across the other leg so you are slightly sort of um, turning and providing some shape so you would bring up one knee and bring it across the leg and just give it a little bit of a turn um, instead of having them sort of so front on and straight onto the camera. You also want to kind of um, turn that body just a little bit more so you can see the shape this way as opposed to it just looking like um, a ball, I suppose, in front. But also the lighting can really help here when you are photographing someone pregnant front on. So the light is coming, I can see, in from this direction, but there's not a lot of shadow coming down this side of, of the model. So it is a little bit more front on and whether or not a reflector has been used, but you probably want to soften it a little bit more and create some more shadow here so that light's not flat so you can see more shape. So what happens when you over light something or you have too much light, you can lose a little bit of that, that dimension. Um, because you know we're, we're working in a two, with a two dimensional subject here in terms of taking a photograph. So you wanna give it that depth and shadows are what are gonna help you. So introducing um, a little bit more shadow around these sort of curvy areas and in here and down the side is going to add more shape and, and, and make it appear like that belly is really coming out and it's not just kind of like that round ball off to the side. Okay, I love um, textures in terms of the way that they can add obviously a really creative background and things like that. So what's happened here with the application of it and some of my textures um, you know have um, some stronger features like this especially my painterly ones you can see that they are you know they'll have sort of areas where they're a little bit more um, I said, oh, what's the word I'm looking for like a little bit more textured than in other areas so where to place those on the photograph um, can be a little tricky so sometimes you've got to you know stretch the the texture a bit more to get rid of that or um, or add multiple textures to add a little bit more detail and texture around it to make it a bit more consistent. Because I can see there's a lot going on over here in this bottom left hand corner and then over here there's not really a lot happening up there. So if you're going to use textures, make them a little bit more consistent throughout the frame and then where you can see the backdrop comes down here and then sort of comes off in that curve um, over here it just looks like a flat wall so you've got to continue with that depth so you can add some more shadows because you can see that there's some shadows here on the ground you know what you can do you can um, use uh, use your gradient tool it's on multiply there at the moment that might be a bit dark and sample sort of some of these areas and you know be a bit more consistent with that shadow um, and then obviously mask it off but try to keep that depth there so it doesn't look so flat uh, and that's the thing when you you know the possibilities are endless when you are using textures to really add um, add to the to the image I love the the expression on her face it looks really natural really relaxed it is very difficult to make people you know come across like they're having a wonderful time in a portrait 
because not everyone loves having their photograph taken so I think you've done a perfect job there in getting that connection with them and making them feel really comfortable in front of the camera because she she does look relaxed even though she's posed you can see that her shoulders are down they're relaxed which is really important um, the one thing that I would probably would love to see is her other eye or have that hair come further over um, the face so you can't see any of the eye because you can just see a little bit of it and that's the one thing for me when I am working um, with people with long hair is always spending the time on getting that hair right because I and I go up to them and I adjust and they probably get sick of me touching their hair but I always say you know I'm so sorry I'm, I'm a perfectionist it's just for me, hair and Photoshop, if I don't get it right now, it's my arch enemy later on. So I always try to get it perfect in camera because it is the hardest thing. Um, well, it's not actually the hardest thing. It's probably just the most time consuming thing to get right later on in post. So try to, you know, grab, grab your shot and then have a look and go, what can I do to make this better? and then come in, make some adjustments, come back, get that next shot. Have a little fun with it as well. But yeah, I do really love the colors here, the exposure on her skin is beautiful. Um, I can see that a little bit of um, liquefying and kind of movement's been put into the bottom of the dress to add some shape. So um, maybe making it a little bit more consistent here because you've got the dress kind of coming up here and then it's sort of looking a little flat there and it's kind of coming out here and here sort of maybe either bring it all the way out or bring it all in and make it sort of nice and even around that edge so it looks like it's hitting the ground evenly um, but that's just my little tip there but yeah I love the colors lots of people still viewing hi everyone we've got um Louisiana. Oh, fantastic. Go Sydney. Holly. Rainy Sydney. Go the rain in Sydney. <laughs> we have been having, uh, for all of you overseas, we've been having some really, really horrendous times here with our weather and the fires in Australia. And we have finally got some relief with the rain that's coming over Victoria and Sydney and Brisbane. And it's it's really helping actually all throughout Australia. And, um, you know, our poor farmers have been suffering from the drought for so long that this relief is very, very welcome. And we're very, very grateful for that. But you know what I actually want to say, um, there's a lot of people in, in my group that have been, you know, reaching out, making sure that all of the Australian photographers here are okay. and and worried obviously for the the, the countless um, lives that have been lost and the, on all of the the dear poor animals so we are very grateful for your kind thoughts um, your donations so many people have like how you know reached out to see how they can help and it is phenomenal to see how many people just across the world have you know been affected by this um, in terms of you know the emotional impact the scale of it and yeah it's it is really overwhelming and um, it is tough times here but um, us Aussies are, are strong and we'll get through it and obviously get back to to where we were but we are all extremely grateful for your um, for everything that you've you know offered to do your kind thoughts everything so yeah actually another little thing that I will share very quickly <laughs> sorry Garrett <laughs> um, is um, I'm working with a few other photographers to create a digital backdrop pack that we're going to share on the 27th of January so there's quite a few amazing talented photographers that are creating some digital backdrops and all of the the profits and the proceeds from that are going to go towards helping um, you know the farmers in in drought and fire affected areas to get back on their feet so we're going to be raising some money with those I'm going to share some more details soon so make sure you keep an eye out for those but it's going to be very I've seen some of the designs they are absolutely incredible Louisa Dunn has gone out of her way to make this happen and it's um, it's hopefully going to raise a lot of money for for those in need. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. All right, let's get back to it. I 
think that the placement of the baby's hands in this is so sweet. It looks really gentle. You know, the baby looks really relaxed. Um, the way that the light is coming in and falling across that sweet face is is really has been captured really well in terms of the exposure there for the face. I'm gonna say though that the light coming in and hitting the rest of the baby needs to be controlled. So the thing is, the hand placement's great, the light on the face is great, the, the baby's body, arms, legs and feet um, have, has been over, you know, overlit. So you've got to control the direction of that light and you need to adjust the posing of the baby to make it easier for you to light the baby. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to suggest here is if we come in a little closer, we've got this you know, beautiful round pop prop. I love the attention to detail that you've got going on here. But the thing is, the baby's body is, is being lit up there because it's up a little bit higher. So it's not sitting down inside that prop. If you just made it a little lower inside that prop, you would, um, the light wouldn't be able to come in and hit the baby there from the side. But the baby's face, um, and this is what I'm going to recommend, it's almost like it needs to be, the baby's body needs to see how it's kind of coming down in that direction. The baby's body needs to be coming over in this direction. So it's almost like if you flipped the baby, um, the, the, the head would be closest to the light source as opposed to the baby's body. So you need to kind of angle the body away from the light when you are posing them and putting them inside props or on your posing bag. So what's, what would happen then if the baby's body was over here and the baby's head here is here and the light's coming in here, the face is going to be the closest to the camera, I mean to the light. So therefore it's going to become brighter. But right now, this part of the baby's body is closest to that light source, so it is brighter. As the baby's face is turned away from the light, so you can see it's coming over this way, it's losing some of that light. So I would suggest putting some more support in behind the baby's neck and shoulders here lift up that face towards that light because as the baby has sunk down in this area and that chin's come down and away from the light the light's coming in and it's hitting the side of the face here and it's it has created some beautiful shadows over here but unfortunately because it is lower than this part um, this part is brighter so you need to bring the face up move the body away control that light a little more by either feathering it, softening it, diffusing it more um, so it's not so harsh because um, if you were to light it like this it would be too bright so you want to soften it more but move that body away from the light and bring that face up just a bit more so it is closest to your light source if that makes sense. The thing you know with with lighting is always tough and I know that when it's tough because I know when you're posing babies you can't always get them in the exact position that you want them in because they've got a mind of their own you know they're unpredictable they'll lie where they want and you can't make a baby go into a particular pose but what I'm going to suggest is as well to make it easier the prop you can see um, is sort of coming down that way which means the baby is going down that way you want to make the prop come this way and the baby whoops the baby's head that way and then have the light source come in and, and turn it away um, at the bottom there so that the head is always closest to your light that's going to make it so much easier when setting up to put a baby in a prop so when you are wrapping, when you are setting things up, always consider the direction of that light and, and where you're going to put the baby. And that's going to make it a lot easier. Um, other thing I'm going to touch on really quickly is when you are blurring and softening um, backgrounds, you can see here you've got a, a red background and then you've got a dark blue scarf. Where these two tones have merged from being blurred, they've created a purple tone as they've blended. Um, you've got to be really careful of that. So try not to soften 
too much when you're using contrasting tones like that that can come together and create some some different color casts if you want to make it soft you know you can come back in and you can you know um, put adjust the color with a with a brush on color mode you can have a little bit of fun there with that but yeah try to keep those tones consistent throughout your entire image um, the lines here in the backdrop as well they they are a little sort of sharp so you know maybe even soften those a bit more you can do that using the patch tool so you can come in um, just the, that and fade them a little bit and then they're not as um, dominant not as dark in the background there so yeah the other thing that I'm gonna um, just touch on lightly is the skin tones in the hands and the feet to keep them more consistent throughout the the baby so warming those up um, as well but yeah adjusting that pose turning that body away will have a huge result on on this type of setup next time you do it but I do love the attention to detail in terms of you know the the way that you've lined the prop the way that you've draped that fabric across um, Holly has just made a comment I thought the same about my recent photo I made all the same mistakes and it kind of is great to see that people are able to even though it might not be their image that you're talking about mm -hmm. they're able to see the same um, issues but also you know the, the the same things that they can improve on with their own photography so yeah absolutely even though you might not get your image submitted still learning lots absolutely alrighty this is the sweetest headband um, okay so uh, the you know the background the styling the the wrapping so much attention has been paid to this and I think you've done a really um, a really lovely job in putting together um, you know the the wrapping and the the backdrop you've paid attention to getting the supports you know underneath the blankets nice and smooth and you know matching the headband with the the wrap um, and, and the baby's face is really, really sweet. The one thing I'm going to say here is sometimes the pose and the position of the baby don't always suit the, the props in terms of the headbands and the hats. So because this is quite, I, th I adore this um, headband and you've even got it in the hair, which is where they belong. Sometimes I see them right down here on the hairline and that's not where they should be positioned so I think you've done a great job of getting it up there in that hairline and the baby's got beautiful hair but do you know what would have worked really well for this keeping the baby on the posing bag and having them on their back and having that headband come around because what's happened here because they're on their side you can see this curve coming down so it's actually made the shape of the head change shape by having it on its side and then you lose half the headband down here because it is the heads resting on it so I would have placed the baby on its back with its little hands up underneath its face with that beautiful headband on that would have probably been my go-to setup for this particular headband um, purely because it's getting lost in there you if it's going to be on the side like this you want to go with something a little bit more delicate that doesn't look like you know it's kind of getting cut off there where the head meets the the backdrop um, so uh, another thing here with the hands being wrapped up like this you really want to try and get those hands up a little higher because at the moment the wrap is kind of looking like it's uh, not quite tight enough underneath those hands you do have to be careful that you don't pull the wrap too tight though because you can obviously you know restrict breathing and you can sort of cut off circulation in the hands but where the hands have come forward too much there they look quite sort of big and heavy and have become distracting they're also a different color tone to the skin on the face so you've got to be careful with that but they're kind of just sitting out there and, and looking a little untidy so if you would brought the baby onto its back then the hands could come back up and sit in here with weight with with gravity 
um, and then you could place them a little easier and put that chin on them and photograph that beautiful face because at the moment the face and the, the head are looking a little um, a little squished there where the face is meeting the side um, the side of the face is meeting that backdrop so if you are going to position the hands like that just make sure that you get them up a little tighter and you create that support with the wrap underneath the, the palm of the hand there and the wrist as well. The, um, the other thing with the wrap is where it's kind of coming around the back here and gathered just you know give that a little bit of a pull smooth it out so it's not so gathered there because you either want to gather it all to create that sort of um, rippled texture look across the entire baby or smooth it out like the rest of the wrap as well. Um, so yeah, but I think you've done you know a great job in terms of styling. You just need to warm up those those skin tones there. I can see you've you've kept all the detail in your highlights, which is not often easy when you're photographing you know a baby with slightly darker skin tones, and you're photographing white. So you've done a great job of controlling those highlights. Um, one thing I will say about smoothing out the background is that it can create banding. So if we have a little look in here, um, I'm starting to see some banding in the, um, the back of the image where there is a lack of information. So when you're painting over backgrounds when you are blurring them, and then there's a, a difference in the tone, you're gonna start to see a lot of these lines come through because there's not a lot of information there. So when you go to print this, unfortunately, those banding lines will print. You'll see them in your photograph. So you need to control that background a little better in camera. You need to get it pulled nice and tight with clamps, make it really smooth. And, and then in post-production, you won't have to do so much painting. I used to paint over all of my backgrounds. And then I started to learn more about, you know, the printing side of things for my clients. And the reason I keep touching on this in terms of printing is because we are photographers that create photographs. Yes, I take a digital image, but I'm creating a photograph for my clients. And I sell products because I wanna create something that they can't create themselves that keeps me employed. It keeps me in a job and I'm a necessary item. I'm not a luxury item, even though I sell luxury products. But I sell them because I want my photographs to hang on people's walls because they mean something, not sit on a USB in a drawer. So always have in mind, that final print in terms of the quality of the 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 information that's in your file and and keeping that um, you know intact so yeah warm up those hands um, you can warm up the skin tones as well there add a little bit of contrast and always be careful not to over soften the skin too you want to keep a little bit of detail in that skin you can see here it is looking really really soft um, and when you are softening the skin on the hands, um, try not to overdo it so that they, they, you know, you are losing that texture and detail. <laughs> All right. Do you know, it's, it's always fun when you try to incorporate um, items that mean something to the parents, the family, all of that kind of stuff. And do you know, I have been requested to photograph babies inside motorcycle helmets and things like that before. And I can tell you, it is not easy. <laughs> so I think you've done a great job here of, you know, combining the baby with, with the helmet. The, the and you've kind of continued, I suppose, with those bright colors into the background there. The thing is the 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 aqua kind of blue background for me is I don't know it's it's working and it's not working there's there's because you've got the fluorescent green going on in the helmet and you've got the the red going on in the over here as well and then black then white there's quite a bit kind of going on here so possibly to bring more attention to the baby because there's so much going on a black or a dark background would have really brought out the the boots and the the helmet and the and the baby a bit more because the I think the aqua background doesn't really need to be there so um, 
when you are putting things together like this and you get those requests, um, trying to get the right combination of colour tones going on can be a little tricky because this this particular colour in here, you know, is not a colour you would put with this colour because of the difference in tone. So try to get that all to match. If you, if you had no other choice in terms of this blue wrap, change the colour in the background to match that so you're not putting too many different um, tones together in, in the one image and you lose that um, on the baby. So yeah, coming in here and having a little look, um, the, the helmet is really sharp so just try to soften that. You can come in with the patch tool as well and you can remove you know a few of these kind of highlights that don't really need to be there. You know, get rid of those um, and, and then that way you you know you're eliminating a lot of the the sort of um, excess busyness that's going on here when it comes to the posing of the baby you can see that those fingers are really tight and I can tell that it was probably a little tricky to get them nice and flat and relaxed sometimes what I find in this situation is I get those hands to a point and if, when they're like this and they're stiff come back I get my test shot I focus my attention um, I focus my attention elsewhere and once they've had a moment to kind of then relax because I'm no longer fussing on them I can come back in and I can adjust those fingers a little more to get them nice and soft so always get that safe shot first um, there's a couple of little highlights here on the baby's face um, around the nose area here um, you need to be careful of so they're a little bright the direction of that light you can see as it's kind of coming in it's lighting the arm it's the brightest part of the image and then it's not quite sort of you know coming across consistently on the face so you need to either bring that light around a little more towards the front of the baby angle it a little higher um, to make that more consistent across the baby and get some more light over here onto this elbow Alrighty, yeah, I can see actually, you know, now zooming out while I'm looking at the light, that shadow is coming directly across the image there, so I can see that the light is coming in from there. You know, those shadows should have been going off in that direction, um, off behind the the subjects, not in a, you know, a, um, at a 90 degree angle. So you really did need to bring that light source around towards the front of the image. But yeah, I, I think you've done a great job of, you know, bringing in a couple of different items from, from the, I'm guessing, the dad and um, combining those into a photograph. I know he'll love, absolutely um, treasure because it means something to him. He's probably got his three favourite things right there in that, that photograph. <laughs> <laughs> you know the the way that that baby's little face is kind of just delicately turned off to the side there that's one of those you know moments um you know when you they when a parent looks at a child and it's like oh they look so peaceful right now so <laughs> i think that's a really good um capture of that baby's face this for me though um in terms of the pose needs to be a little bit more refined the baby's arms across like that we're sort of losing we've got this arm that's coming across here but we're kind of losing the top part of this arm and the skin tones are so close to the wrap that it's blending into the wrap so it looks a little untidy you're not quite sure when you first look at it um, you can see the baby's face and the arm here but then as you come down because then you see this line you go oh that's the other baby's arm because it, it at first blended in with the, the wrap it being such a similar tone that can be controlled with your lighting um, and in post-production but a little bit more attention to um, the wrapping and the posing there um, in, in future will help you as well so with that bottom arm this one here and I know it can be really tricky you can get that wrap absolutely perfect and then all of a sudden that baby stretches out and the arms come out so just try to tuck 
that those little arms back in and get those elbows separated and down the side of the baby's body and then you can bend those elbows up and place the hands on the chest together so that's kind of what I always look for so as that elbow is right across the chest there you really want that elbow to come down here and then bend up and bring those hands together so it doesn't sort of you know sit down here um, looking a little awkward the um, you know the placement of the feet is lovely you you can bring those those knees back a little bit and bring the leg up that way and fold those legs up a little tighter like I said it can be a little tricky I teach all of this in my wrapping tutorials and along with a lot of different other wrapping um, tutorials in their wrapping styles and it is it does pay to practice as much as you can with a fake baby even a a $10 doll from Kmart you can practice wrapping um, I know people who practice on stuffed animals so get something practice um, how you place your hands where you place them and how you bring that wrap around the subject but yeah even those material um, stuffed dolls oh I've got one in there Garrett could you grab that for me it's just sitting on the shelf in there she's a she looks a little wild and crazy but I can tell you and I know people are waiting for my fake baby to come but unfortunately there is going to be a, oh this is the one with the crazy hair. Oh, do you hair. really want to show her? I don't, want, I don't want to scare people. Oh but. just do it. <laughs> she is a little scary. I can tell you you know twenty dollars will get you a doll like this that has arms and legs but to practice your wrapping techniques you want to get those legs up here on on the on the body sitting nice and flat not sort of down and crossed so that they um, create leading lines like this that come down out of the out of the pose and out of the frame but yeah it you know I know people like I said are waiting for for my fake baby to come but we have run into a few issues in terms of trademarking and patenting um, that um, product in another country so it is a very very expensive process and time consuming let me tell you so it's been very frustrating but I, I do apologize for everyone that has been waiting but like I said you don't have to buy an expensive doll or a particular doll just go and buy something that you can sit and practice with and practice your lighting and your exposing someone calls theirs um, creepy creepy baby yeah she is kind of scary it's the hair she's kind of got a few ball patches and she's got this angry look on her face but I tell you um, I used her for a long time um, in terms of demonstrating and wrapping and practicing and it works as creepy as it is <laughs> all right so color tone wise with this image you know I can see that you've paid particular attention to those beautiful soft muted natural tones to tie it all together with your with the blanket and the wrap and the hat um, and I and I love all of those beautiful soft muted tones the one thing that is kind of standing out here for me is these strong shadows so be very careful because I can see that as the lights come across the baby this is actually here because it's dipped down really far this has actually created a wall in front of the baby to stop the light hitting the face here so it's come across and it's it's it is hitting the baby over here but you can see that it's actually becoming brighter up here so when you create that well in the middle of your posing bag um, you know you are as it goes down and if you think of it like this you know there's a this is a bowl so obviously it goes down when the lights coming across it's you are going to create shadows with the side of the posing bag if it comes down to think too much this is where the light needs to be elevated up a little higher and you need to direct it down into where the baby is so have a look at my lighting tutorials because it's going to really help you use light to add some contrast to this image because it's looking a little flat and um, and it'll also help you separate if you were using light you could add you know some highlights to this arm so therefore it didn't 
it wasn't flat and blending in with the wrap if that makes sense and you can use the shadows from that light um, on the baby's features to create some some dimension there around the face some some depth and and add to those beautiful um, beautiful cheeks and everything so be a little bit more careful there in terms of that that lighting alrighty We've had a few maternity photos today. We have. And another high key one. Um, do you know, it's, it is hard photographing women front on. Like I said earlier when we were talking about another maternity portrait, and it is very hard to control your highlights when you're photographing white. So at the moment, what I'm kind of looking at here is the light is coming in um, across from the left hand side and it's hitting obviously um, the white wrap that's closest to the light source then we've got the white here and, and the white down here that is looking really quite bright and having a look over here a lot of that information is um, right up against the end of that histogram so when you're using um, fabric and features like this it's there needs to be a little bit more movement so at the moment it just looks like she's holding it and it's hanging try to add like a little bit of movement in there with a hairdryer a fan or something like that just to kind of give it a bit more um, a bit more shape so it's not just draping for the sake of doing it because she kind of looks like she's in the middle of lifting it up over her shoulders as opposed to creating something that's beautiful and flowing in the background. And when you add a little bit of movement to their hair in terms of wind, um, it will also add some softness and shape to the photograph too. Another thing I'm gonna point on is where you are positioned in relation to them to take the photograph. Uh, you're probably just that little bit too low and front on. So try moving yourself around a little further. So at the moment I can see you're standing, you know, in front of the, the model. Bring yourself around a little more um, to come a bit more side on so you're not so front on. Because what we've done here is we've created a very large surface area with that belly and it's making her look very bottom heavy. So her head actually looks quite small to the rest of her. When you move around to the side, you'll see less of this. Um, and if you come from a little bit higher, you'll see less of this. And then if you are up that little bit higher, you'll get that chin up. So you'll have less double chin and you'll see less underneath her skin, um, underneath her chin and then you'll add more shape to the belly. So it's gonna be more flattering to her. Always try to get, when you're photographing a pregnant woman, always try to get them to turn their hips a little bit and come from a bit more of a side angle. And you know, again, um, at the sake of being, showing you all of my flaws. <laughs> when you're, when you're, if you were to photograph me front on, um, you're going to make me look really quite wide. Turn them, yeah, turn them side on. And then you're gonna have that beautiful belly come out the side. And now, if you see, you're seeing less of my back arm, if you're gonna have the arms up like that. So it's gonna be more flattering because now you can't see my tuck shop lady arms. <laughs> and if no, I'll, I'll squat so you don't have to move it. <laughs> and then when you come from a higher perspective, the chin comes up and it's a bit more flattering. So always remember um, when you are photographing a pregnant woman, they don't always feel great, even though they look great. Um, they always feel bigger than what they look, and you don't want to make them self conscious either. So try to give them some shape by turning them and you coming more around towards the side and coming from a bit higher of a not too high but a bit higher so that you can get that chin up and you can you know get that beautiful face um, a little bit closer to the camera also I'm going to talk a little bit about lens choice here because um, with with shooting a hang on there we go with photographing um, someone like this I know a lot of people are often restricted with the size of their studio if you shoot with a wider angle lens 
the closest object to your camera is going to appear larger and in this case it's her belly and that's why her head is looking a little smaller because it's further away from the lens so if you shoot this with a longer focal length um, what you're going to do then and from a higher perspective is you're going to create less distortion and you're going to flatten the features which are going to be more flattering to her that's for sure but I do like how you've gone to the to the you know the trouble of of putting together you know an outfit and creating something a little different just be careful with that pose because when people look at photographs of themselves you want them to go wow that looks amazing I could say to you hey you just need to liquefy this but you know what we need to learn to get the posing and the lighting right to create shape that's more flattering because you can do that with the right posing techniques with the right lens and with the right light you can you can make people appear slimmer so when you go and have a look at my my maternity products my maternity tutorials I teach all of that with lots of different shaped women that are pregnant and um, it believe me it took a long time to learn that but I'm also very fortunate when I was a lot younger I did modeling myself so I learned how to stand how to sh how to to turn what was a great position and what not um, so I therefore put that into my work to, to bring the best out in my clients as well. When it comes to light, there is a lot of light coming in from the left, from top to bottom. So if it's a window, block it off at the bottom, direct that light into where it needs to be and soften it a little bit because even if you like high key photos, you do need those shadows, like I said, to highlight those features um, to create shape. All right, let's keep moving. I'm doing a lot of talking. <laughs> an hour and 27 minutes, you are doing a lot of talking. I'm sorry. But everyone is loving it. Um, some have to go to bed because they're falling asleep. Good night. <laughs> Please come back and watch the rest. They'll be back tomorrow, they say. What lens do I recommend? So I shoot with a 24 to 70 on my camera pretty much all the time. It is my go-to client lens. And that's because it's versatile and it is beautifully sharp. Um, I love it. It has everything that I need in, in that one lens. I also have an 85mm um, prime lens. It's a 1.285. It is a beautiful piece of glass and I have a 50mm 1.2 as well prime and they are both amazing lenses. I'm a bit of a creature of habit. I tend to just keep the same lens on, but if I'm going for a specific look or if I'm shooting for something, um, you know, with with an intention in mind, then I will be a little bit more selective with my lens choice. But when it comes to portraits, you want a longer focal length. When you shoot with a wide angle lens, like a 35 mil lens, and if you're not quite sure how that glass um, you know, renders the shape of a file in, in terms of what it captures, how it creates distortion, it is very, um, it is a little difficult to, to get the capture right in camera. You can, obviously, there's a lot of people out there that say, you know, I use a 35, but I, I, I make my adjustments later on in, in camera raw or Lightroom and things like that to fix lens distortion. Do you know what, if that works for you, go for it. But at the end of the day, I'm a portrait photographer, so I'm gonna use a portrait lens, which is gonna be a, have a longer focal length to get the, 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 just, yeah, to get the best capture that I possibly can for my clients. That's what it's all about. Alrighty, this is the cheekiest little smile I have seen in a while. Look at that. <laughs> She almost looks like she wants to, to, you know, she's going to run off and do something a bit naughty there. Location wise, um, you know, I can see you've, you've sourced something with that's, you know, a beautiful location. It's got a waterfall, it's got some beautiful rocks, may not be the best location for this portrait. So for me, there's so much going on over here in the background and, and then the rocks over here are really dark. And I can see that it's been shot in a in an, what looks to me. I'm going to make an assumption the brightest part of the day, so that that 
light is really quite bright and it's on a very sunny day and you found some shade but unfortunately it's um, you know this the light is still sort of coming in and and highlighting some areas of the image here um, the nose where you've got that little bit of a shadow the highlight on the top of the head and down here as well so you've got to be careful when you are choosing the right time of day to go out and take photographs you know the middle of the day um, is obviously the brightest part of the day so try to wait for a little bit later in the day or early in the morning with kids this age mm, I'd probably not go out at five six o'clock because that's usually witching hour um, it's not the best time of day for little ones when they're at the end of the day so try to get these little ones out you know as early as possible if you're going for an outdoor shoot so that that Sun is not as bright um, as well but yeah when you are shooting waterfalls and things like that in the brightest part of the day and you're trying to get your exposure over here in the shade right you are gonna overexpose um, all of those bright highlights in the background so you've got so much going on here that she's kind of getting lost and blending into the background here so be very careful with that background because you know what she's great um, in terms of the way that she's kind of squatting down this is what kids this age do very hard to pose them you'll move their arm one second and it's gone the next um, and but you've got the connection with the camera you've got that really great response I can see that you're you're an, you know obviously communicating with her really well and she's having fun which is perfect just find that right location shoot at the right time of day and and then work on you know possibly shooting from a slightly higher angle um, so you're not shooting you know down lower than her get down to the same level but don't be below her and shooting up you want to get up a little bit higher um, and have her looking up towards you in that instance when you are just that little bit more elevated you're gonna see where's my you're gonna see more from a higher perspective of that beautiful dress as well a dress like this is probably not well suited to an environment like this unless of course she was a flower girl at a wedding and this is where the wedding took place but just look around do a little bit of scouting for those those good backgrounds that have got less going on um, and you'll you'll be great all right <laughs> that's cute look at those cheeks do you know what there is something over here that has got both of their attention because they are both looking in the same direction and you know what like you can zoom in you can see the the light coming in here on the side of the eye on both of them um, so therefore you've got someone over here that's got their attention and unfortunately you're the one that needs their attention uh, very hard with newborns obviously but this little one here this little girl um, what I do when parents are obviously there and I know sometimes you know parents are the ones that are you know got to be close by especially with this age because they get a little scared you need to have mum or dad by so that they you know are the extra set of hands to keep them in position um, I always sort of say if you just sit here I, you know I'll be the one that's that's talking and communicating with them so you can use um, you know different sounds you can use rattles squeaky toys all that kind of stuff to get their attention but you're the one that needs it not the parents so you need to tell the parents okay if I can get you just to stand here um, I'm gonna try and grab their attention because when you get that connection with the camera then it's later on when they're looking at that photo they're looking at her as if she's looking back at them now they're gonna look at this photo and go no oh, she was looking at me and remember that they were off to the side so you've got to think long term with that connection with the camera means that the the person that's looking at that photo later on is gonna get that have that same connection with that child that's what it's all about but when they're turning their head towards that person over here they're turning away from the light source so you got to bring their head back to the light because you've got that in the right spot their heads just facing this way when it should be facing you straight up so always consider that as well in terms of letting the parents get in there too much um, when it comes to the crop 
here. Um, so it's it's about an eight by 10 ratio at the moment. What's happened is you've got a lot more information at the top here than you do at the bottom and you've cropped through the bottom of that hand. So bring that hand up a little higher on the baby so you're not cropping it off and don't be afraid to crop through the top of the head it doesn't need to be there the faces what faces are what need to be there and then try and get them a little straighter in camera so that they're not on that angle the um the skin tones look lovely the way that it's styled is lovely the hand placement on the top of that baby's head is just divine um, and she is the cutest little thing in the world, but it's almost like it's just that split second off being perfect and getting that face up to look at that camera. <laughs> look at that cute teddy. Okay, and we've got a little smile here as well. It's not easy getting that smile captured because they, they come and go very, very fast. Do you know, we've got... The styling, I can see you've you've taken the time to to get this, um, you know, styled really beautifully. We've got a handle over here. We've got it's a bucket of some description. I can see. Oh, yep, where the handle comes in and ties down around there. They don't need to be there. So um, I would have removed this top handle up here in post production and these ones over here as well. You can clone those out, but at the moment they're just dark areas that belong to a bucket, because I know it's a bucket, but you can't see the bucket. So you need to, to either have some of the bucket in it or get rid of those altogether. Or if this was the type of setup that you were going for, possibly this wasn't the, the most ideal prop choice. And I know not everyone's got a lot of props, but you know, like a, um, a, a bowl of some description with less things going on because the reason that I'm I'm talking about these little elements is because you've got one two three four around the outside um, as in four here and then you've got five and six going on here you've got something going on here and here and then you've got the lace going on over here and then you've got a really textured background so there is a lot of texture, there is a lot of bits and pieces happening. So even though it's quite a simple setup in terms of you've kept all the tones really similar, there's a lot of different textures going on here that are creating some distracting elements within the frame. So be mindful of that when you're putting things together. I can see that the, the, um, uh, the colored wool that's going on around here sort of somewhat matches the, the teddy bear. Possibly the headband doesn't need to be there um, or that could have been better suited to a different setup and kept this more, you know, with the, the neutral fur and the lacy gown. But you've got one type of fur, another type of fur and lace, which is a very busy texture, all going on in the same image. The way that the baby's been placed in there is, is perfect. Um, the, the light is probably a little bit too intense. It needs to be softened so you can feather that light a little more. If it's natural light, try softening it with some sheer curtains a bit more um, and filtering it. And then over here, um, what I would do is bounce some light back in to soften some of those, those shadowy areas because you're shooting you know, whites and creams, you want to kind of keep it nice and light and bright, it's, um, you need to bring in some some highlights into those, those shadows there. Uh, some of these areas around here are a little bit too bright as well where the light is hitting them. So um, controlling that light source is, is going to have some huge, you know, results on, on the final image here. I love the little smile, like I said, and the placement of the teddy's great in the hands and the little feet and everything, it's, it's great. The, the way that the baby's in the center of the frame, um, great job, you've not cropped through that. Just reconsider all the different elements that you're bringing together and adjust that lighting and you'll see some huge changes, like I said. Mm -hmm. All right, I feel actually kind of looking at this and I'm seeing there could be multiple different captures within this one frame so I'm kind of looking at it going this is just the sweetest 
how sweet would that be like on its own and then I'm kind of looking at it going down here you've got the perfect little toe shot um, if you're doing albums that's a great little image to have in there as well and then you've kind of got this this sort of um, design going on over here as well so there's a little bit going on in quite a simple setup if that makes sense so when we re refine our posing and we bring it all together um, you'll see you know there, there won't be so many different shots within this one one frame um, the wrap is probably a little bit too loose and big and bulky around the outside of the baby because the baby looks tiny here but it almost looks like it's a really big baby underneath that blanket so using a different type of fabric and I can see that it's actually is it the same fabric that's in the background it looks like it's the exact same fabric that's in the background there and sometimes our our blankets can be a little thick to to make wraps and things like that out of and I know that it's not a, not always easy finding um, you know the matching colors and stuff like that with softer fabrics for, to get wraps out of but what I would suggest is um, using less of that wrap in terms of having it around the baby and pulling it a little bit tighter the baby looks you know really sweet up here it's perfect the um the wrap itself is probably what's disconnecting the top half of the baby with the bottom half of the baby because it is so big and bulky and then you've got this bit over here coming off and the reason it's standing out so much is because the lights coming in from the right and the shadows over here are what are create are impacting those in and creating those leading lines taking your eye away from what's going on over here so you, um, you need to sort of grab that shot and go right what am I looking at first where is the baby in all of this the way that you've lit the baby um, in terms of the light coming across you know um, that there is okay it's just that the rest of the the different elements don't quite work um, in this frame the feet are also closest to the camera so when you are zooming in and you have a little look here you've got the focus on the eye which is fantastic and then you've got soft feet so try to get um, you know that upper body raised a little higher closest to that camera and and then the feet will come down and um, they'll they'll look they need to be further away from the camera is what I'm trying to say uh, <laughs> get it out Kelly the um, the other thing around the outside there's a little bit of cloning and inconsistency there in the texture of the background get that blanket pulled really tight keep the blankets underneath the top blanket nice and smooth so you've got that smooth blanket and then you won't have to spend so much time trying to fix the 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 wrinkles and, and everything in the blanket later on in post-production so when you sort of look at it you you it's very soft here but you've got texture there there's another line over here and so forth um, you can use my 50% gray layouts five bucks um, and there's a tutorial there called Bland to Brilliant which will show you how to use that to get rid of a lot of the um, imperfections in blankets in terms of those highlights and shadows where light hits those wrinkles. That'll really help there. The baby's skin tones um, are just a little bit cool so you need to warm those up just a little bit. You can see down here there's some cooler sort of more magenta-y blue tones. Um, and then just bringing the warmth up there. You can kind of also just be careful when you are adjusting the blanket there that you don't bring um, any of that blur or um, clone into the, the hairline or onto the baby as well. But you know, the simplicity of this is what I, I'm really enjoying. There's so, it's, there's, it's so simple. There's, it's not overcrowded, but at the same time, it could just be refined to to you know really um, create something quite striking another thing I'm going to suggest here is I can see that the baby is laying quite flat create a beautiful round well shape underneath the baby on those um, on whatever you're photographing on and bring that baby's head up 
a little higher and you'll eliminate the amount of area um, on the, the stomach and the chest there that you're seeing. And then if you turn that baby onto its side slightly, you'll be able to create a rounder shape as well, which is easier to wrap. Alrighty. Okay. I like seeing different images like this. So we've got a really formal portrait and then we've got like a lot of those colors being brought down into the, the frame here. So the attention to detail is really quite amazing, you know, and you've got a lot of um, sort of different elements going on here. The one thing that's kind of missing for me is how does it all tie together? So you have an empty chair, like in terms of storytelling, you've got an empty chair and then you've got some fabric over here underneath a vase with a specific like type of plant in there. And then you've got a lamp. So we've created, we've got the, the environment, but how does the portrait connect with the environment? Is this her home? Um, has something happened? Like, I'm, I'm trying to get the connection between the portrait and the home. It might just be that it's a simple portrait hanging on a wall, but um, sometimes I think you want to take the viewer on a, on a bit more of a journey and add more of the story. So there might just be an element there that's missing in terms of how it connects and, and what connects her to that environment, if that makes sense. It's not just the color palette because I can see you've got the same color of the hair here and here. You've got the same color of the book here and here. You've got the same color as the chair here and here. The dress, however, is nowhere else in the frame except for the little bit of detail um, that's coming up through here, but it's not a very dominant color, so there's no connection there either. So there's a few things kind of going on here. And the other thing that, that confuses me is the look in her face like she almost she almost looks angry <laughs> she looks stubborn steel stern she's beautiful she's striking but she's got this intense look in her face where she is holding that belly um, quite gently but the look in her face doesn't quite match if you know what I mean so I think we just need to tie the, all the different elements together a little better, better in terms of storytelling. Um, when it comes to lighting, I'll go up here and have a little look at the portrait. There's a little bit of haloing kind of going on over here around the hair and we've got texture in the background but it, it tends to get a little soft when it blends into her hair here on the edge as well. There's also a highlight um, here on the nose that could be slightly softened. So just uh, adjusting that light source. I would actually, I can where the light is coming in and it's really highlighting the hair um, and it's created some really strong shadows down the side of the body there, bringing that light around just a little more and softening it would reduce the would not eliminate these shadows but reduce the contrast between highlights and shadows and really soften those down for you and we can create more consistent light across her face and the hair here wouldn't create that contrasty shadow on her face as well. Um, posing wise you know beautiful um, love the hand placement and things like that and the, the little bit of haloing sort of coming around the back there just be careful of those as well. But yeah, I, when, it, when, I'm, when I'm presented with something like this, I'm trying to, to go on a journey with the photographer in terms of what's the story? What are we seeing here right now? And someone's just said she looks like Nicole Kidman. She totally does. Um, someone has also asked, when is your next critique? If you go to the banner in this group, right at the very top of the, the group, so you might even need to click on discussion later on, you'll see in the banner all the dates for every month between now and June. All right. So posing wise here, baby, um, baby looks really nice and comfortable. <laughs> There's this little frown going on, this little crease here. It's makes I'm guessing it's a boy makes him look like even more like a boy there's a lot of softening going on here 
with some different color tones coming through. So there's a bit of a vignette coming through. I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger. There's a bit of a vignette coming through on both sides there where it is darker and then it obviously becomes brighter in the center of this image. So just be careful when you are adding vignettes and things like that, that they are not a different color to what's already in the frame because you've got some sort of magenta -y, pinky purple tones going on over here and then you've got your gray tones over here. So try not to um, introduce any new tones that aren't necessarily needed um, in, the, in the frame or aren't consistent throughout the entire image as well. The, the lighting coming across the baby here, it seems quite bright um, and there are some shadows. I think what it needs is just a little bit more softening and it probably just needs um, you know bringing down just a little bit and try not to over process the image in in Photoshop or, or Lightroom whatever you're using um, to take away a lot of that depth within the skin and, and removing the tone because right now it's kind of looking a little flat the direction of that light if you pull the baby's bottom back further away from that light you'll reduce the highlights on the knees as well and then adding a little bit of support down here will lift the um, the feet up so the foot won't go down leading you out of the frame it'll bring that foot up and create that curve around the body you also don't want to crop your images too tight here um, the edge of the frame is really close to both both ends of the baby so you want to give it a little bit more space and in doing that you're um, going to be wanting to crop your image in camera that way so you've got more background up the, behind the baby and, um, and less down here so I always try to have my baby in the bottom two-thirds in this type of setup as well so I've got that distance behind the baby you also want to bring yourself further around um, to to this side to shoot this from this angle when you shoot in here you tend to kind of see things that you don't need to see so if you bring your body further around towards the the baby's head you'll eliminate a lot of the um, the unnecessary shadows and things like that this little arm here I don't mind that it's down like that it looks like it's very gentle getting that hand up underneath that cheek can sometimes be very tricky babies just are gonna do what babies are gonna do but come in get your safe shot and you'll um, you know you'll be able to sort of um, let that baby relax a little bit and then you can try and adjust and bring that hand in another thing here as well like you can see how high that hand here is sitting so it's kind of up really high you've got to bring that elbow down behind the body or bring that face up onto turn that face up onto the hand so you could bring his little chin around and up onto that hand and bring that face up which will make it easier for you to shoot from this angle okay whoops <laughs> all right I can see you've you've gone to the trouble here of really trying to you know bring together some you know creative styling elements for this particular portrait of this baby. Sometimes it just needs to be about the baby. I'm, I'm looking at the pose and it's hard to see the entire pose because of the skirt, but from what I can see here, you've done a great job of getting that little hand up underneath the baby's face um, and into this position. Turning the baby's face up this way, so get your safe shot, and then as it's kind of, as the face is down like this into the blanket, you want to pull the face up, you know, so that cheek kind of sits up on that hand right there. And then you can add a little bit more support up underneath that hand to help bring that face up a little higher so you can see more of it. And then you can get down lower so you can see more of that baby. The other thing um, is when you are using, you know, different elements like this, these are standing out a lot more than the baby. The light is hitting the flowers perfectly and the skirt perfectly, but unfortunately it's missed the baby. And the baby's face, if you look at the tone, actually this is a good exercise. 
let's have a look let's touch our little hand let's have a look at where the information for the background sits within our histogram and now where the information sits within the histogram on the baby's face it's the exact same tone so if we move it around it's the same as the blanket so the baby is blending into the blanket and the headband and the skirt are overpowering it because the light is hitting them drawing your attention towards them so you need to get because you can see it's it's darker here where the posing bag is is obviously coming down but the light source isn't in the right position to come in to light the baby's face the light is coming down it's hitting the background it's hitting the headband and it's hitting the skirt and missing the baby so whilst it's in on the right side of the baby it just needs to be adjusted a little bit more a little bit more fine-tuned to get it um, you know into the right area of the image but that could also mean that you might need to look for something a little bit smaller and you might also need to adjust the supports here underneath that baby. So great attempt. The, the blanket, you've done an excellent job of keeping that blanket nice and smooth and you're getting that light in the right place. Sometimes less is more. So um, I would have loved to have seen a little bit more of the posing under here because you've done a great job of getting that elbow um, and that hand up in that right place underneath the baby. <laughs> Didn't she do it? Oh, I love little portraits like this. She's so sweet. Okay, looking at this, I'm really enjoying the overall, you know, um, warm color tones in this. And I think that's just the sweetest expression on her little face. And her hair is gorgeous. What I'm, I'm then drawn to is the, her hands disappearing. One's cropped out and one's in her lap. So possibly for this particular shot, because I'm hoping that you got more of her in this setup because it is really sweet, like maybe, maybe what you need here is just a beautiful tight crop of that face and get rid of everything else. You don't need the hands if you're gonna crop through, like you don't need all of the arms if you're gonna crop through the hands. So it's all about that face. The, the texture that's been added here, um, it's added like a, a really different kind of feel here, but I feel that it might not be the right texture for this particular image. Something with a little less, um, a little less texture in terms of size would probably work best here because this is quite a big sort of area quite close to the head and it's just drawing your eye away from that little girl's face. Um, a little ribbon like this, if it keeps standing out, your eye keeps going to it, get rid of it. You don't need it if you're going to shoot it from this angle. If you're shooting down lower and you've got that bow beautifully centered in the middle of the frame and it's part of the dress because you can see more elements of the dress, then that's perfect. But right now from this elevation where it sticks out, it's distracting, it's not um, contributing in any way so it's just drawing your eye away from her beautiful face okay I would also have her turned a little more towards that light source right now that light is coming straight in from the side you can see where it's even coming in behind her and continuing on but it's hitting this side of her face and this side of her nose creating some really dark shadows and even though that's, it is just the cutest face, those, those shadows need to be softer to really, um, you know, to, to really sort of draw your eye in to that expression. Um, if we turned her around a little bit more and we had that light source up a little higher, that would also really benefit this as well. If we have a look at the catch lights, you can see, um, let's have a little look here. You know, you can see that light coming in over here. Um, I would again have a little look at adding in a reflector and bouncing in some light into those shadows. She's got a white dress on, she's got beautiful blonde hair and creamy skin. 
doesn't need to be dark and grungy. Even though I love all these beautiful warm tones, you can still retain those. Just fill some of those shadows so it's not so contrasty and turn her on a 45 degree angle towards that light source. Last image. Oh, gosh. Oh, the posing here is beautiful between mum and baby. Like you've you've got that baby posed and it doesn't look like a small baby. I'm gonna make a little guess there. That's that's a nice chunky baby. And you have posed um, him or her beautifully on mum. Mum's expression is really gentle, really soft. I think that you are a little too low with your camera angle. Really need to come up and shoot this from a higher perspective. So because mum's head is really coming down a bit lower. So what I would have done is got up a bit higher and come around a little more. So instead of being positioned here with my camera, I would have been positioned here with my camera. You can turn that baby's face a little more towards the lens and bring mum's chin up and that's gonna be a much more flattering angle. You're still gonna have her head exactly where it is, just get her to lift her chin up towards that lens and stand up on something just a little bit higher and shoot slightly down. In doing that, you're gonna eliminate the size of her arms and you're going to also remove this because when you come around here, you're gonna see less of this. That's what it's all about. Keeping that connection, but getting that camera angle just right. Um, when I look at something like this, you know, and it's such a beautiful moment between mum and baby, I'm not quite sure if that's a, it is a texture in behind, but I'm not quite sure that it actually is necessary. It's sort of, it's pulling me away from this beautiful moment right here. And at the moment it just looks like a dirty wall in the background because it's been blurred so much. So a texture is either there to add detail and to enhance an image, not add distracting elements to take your eye away from the image, if that makes sense. So for this type of setup, I would have gone for, because she looks like she's on, a, on quite a bright background, a white background, and she's wearing a white top. And you've got your, your, you know, your lighting and exposure up there. So for a texture in the background here, I would have probably gone with something, um, you know, a little bit more high key and a, and a much smaller texture. So it looked more like a canvas in the background as opposed to, um, you know, bigger elements that have been blurred. So be very careful. Sometimes when you are learning to use textures or even if you've been using textures for a long time, Sometimes finding the right texture for the right image can take you a while. I have, oh God, I have thousands of textures. Sometimes I waste so much time going through them just trying to find the right one that I've now cataloged them in a way that if I've got an image like this, I can go to my high key textures, I can go to my canvas textures, my painterly textures, my grit textures. Um, I know which textures in terms of the way that I've got them catalogued because there's so many of them. Um, I know where to find them because I was wasting so much time going through figuring out which one was going to suit which image best. But yeah, have a look at the overall setup. Have a look at, um, you know, all of that. But, you know, try and match them as best as you can. The, I don't think there's anything else I really need to say about this. I think the lighting is beautiful. Yes, I do need to say something. Um, tr the skin softening on mum has just been taken that little bit too far. You want to leave texture in their skin S because at the moment when you zoom in, you've got some really soft areas and then you've also got some other areas um, that aren't so soft. So there's, there's a lack of consistency in that skin texture throughout the, the mum's face. So try to be a little bit less heavy handed when applying skin softening, um, whether you're using you know plugins or actions, um, paint it on and then zoom in and, and pull it back and have a look at the, the opacity of that layer so you can get it just right. But yeah, great job with that posing. Also, if you do come round to that higher 
angle slightly around, get that baby's face turned around, you're going to see less of this, which looks a little awkward and uncomfortable. So pose is great, light's great, get that camera angle right and reduce um, that skin softening and change the, the texture and you will be fine. Alrighty, so that did take me a little while. Guys, I'm so sorry if you've sat there the whole time listening to me waffle on. Just on two hours, that was pretty good. Oh, fantastic. Every, everyone is absolutely loving it and um, Holly even says, you see everything. <laughs> <laughs> so this is because um, I've been judging competitions, photography competitions for a long time and I go through judges training and I've learnt what to look for. I've learnt the technical elements. So I'm not judging these images. I'm critiquing them and I'm, I'm showing you what I can see. So it's a very different process um, when you do go through the judging process, but it's taught me how to see everything and what to look for. And you know, it's made me such a better photographer myself because now every time I pick up my camera, you know, I'm looking at what I can perfect. I'm looking at what I can get right in camera so that I'm not wasting time in post-production trying to fix problems. Or I'm planning my shoots so much more before I even start them so that I get it right in camera. And it's a little different when you've got clients coming in, but you know what, you, you can't buy experience, so keep practicing, keep shooting. When you don't have clients, try and get some models. If you can't get models, get a scary, creepy, fake baby and practice as much as you can. Practice your lighting, practice your styling, practice um, photographing your family, your kids. When I studied photography, I photographed anything and everything that I possibly could. My goodness, I've got a cousin and I photographed her like you would not believe all the time to the point where she'd be like, no more. But do you know what? It made me a better photographer because the more I shot, the better I got at identifying what I needed to improve next time. Because there is a saying within our industry that is, you are only as good as your last shot. So I don't ever strive to be the best photographer. I strive to be the best photographer that I can be that day for that client or for that shoot. Better than my last shoot so that I'm constantly changing, I'm constantly evolving, constantly learning. And you never stop learning, it doesn't matter where you get. We all have these ideas of what we want to achieve, um, ambitions and goals, but you know what? what it comes down to is a process of never ending learning from everything that we do. You learn from a textbook, you learn from a tutorial, you learn from a shoot, you learn from a capture, you learn from an edit. Everything that you do, you are always constantly learning whether you are aware of it or not. So continue to push yourself and um, I love doing these critiques because I know how valuable they are and I'm always surprised at how little people actually tune in to watch because I always learn myself sitting here going through images and it makes me more aware of what to look for in my own you know, work as well. We can never become too complacent when we're shooting. The lazier we get in camera, the more difficult and the more pressure we put on ourselves later on. So always remember that. But I'm gonna go because it's Friday. I have not even packed a bag before I've got to get on my flight tomorrow. This time tomorrow I will be boarding my flight. And I think it's gonna, it's like an hour and a half flight to Sydney and then it's like a 24 hour flight from Sydney to London and um, first stop is Manchester. Uh, where I'm then going to visit some of my beautiful family that I haven't seen for a long time and then I'm back to London for SWPP. So if you're coming, please make sure you come up and say hi to me. I'm going to be in judging room number four. Lots of incredible images in there and then I'm going to be obviously teaching but I'm going to be hanging around for the rest of the convention. So please come say hi. And then if you are coming to my Amsterdam workshop and then my Dubai workshop straight after that, I can't wait to see you there. I'm really looking forward to those as well. But I'm going to go pack my bags and I will see you all next month. Have a great weekend.